Hello, and welcome to Common Good Cocktail Guide, Old Fashioned Edition. So today we're going to uh, make one together and talk about the ins and outs of it, why it is actually still to this day my favorite cocktail to make and why it still challenges me when I make it. The old fashioned, uh, it actually comes from uh, a definition of just what a cocktail is that Jerry Thomas gave us in 1850, that a cocktail is booze, bitters, and sugar. So that is the old fashioned cocktail and that's what we use to make it now. Uh, a quick caveat and like apologies if you're from Wisconsin and if you've had old fashions that have a lot of other ingredients. Wisconsin old fashions are delicious and they're their own animal. Today, we're just gonna focus on uh, the classic old fashioned. So three simple ingredients and we're gonna learn how to balance them, uh, how to uh, include water integration to an appropriate level and to tweak it the way you uh, would love it at home. So let's get started. For my old fashions, um, I prefer uh, a, a bourbon to a rye and uh, I prefer bourbons that display um, uh, what I love the most about oak. Uh, when it gives me those baking spices, those caramel, those deep, rich, robust notes. Buffalo Trace is, is kind of an ideal uh, old fashioned bourbon for that. If you don't have a bottle of Buffalo Trace at home, I just recommend getting a higher proof, like higher than 80, ideally 100 or above, like at least 90 or above. And uh, one that's at least four years old. Uh, I probably prefer mine uh, five to eight, uh, 10 years might be even a good sweet spot. So we start with our base spirit, we're gonna do two ounces. So I recommend measuring, measuring it all out, especially with the sugar, it's gonna be very important that you're very precise. A little bit too much, a little bit too little will uh, ruin your old fashioned. So the base spirit, we're gonna have two fluid ounces, which in this style of Japanese jigger is all the way to the very brim. Sugar syrup, so let's talk about it. Um, many of you maybe have muddled sugar cubes in there fine if that's your jam. Uh, I like to uh, use a syrup, uh, that way I know exactly how much of that sugar cube, or if, if there is like a granulated sugar involved, how much of it exactly is gonna be integrated in. Otherwise, sometimes when you muddle that sugar cube, you'll see little little bits of sugar still like uh, uh, around in your glass, and that's, that's no fun for me. Uh, and uh, this at least I think gives a better chance of precision. Also, here's what's fun about flavors. Straight up, you could do uh, just regular sugar syrup, like refined white sugar, like brown sugar, you can use uh, molasses, you can use maple syrup, you can use honey. There's a lot of different ways to do it. For us, we actually take uh, an Okinawan black sugar, mineral and salt driven, we'll steep in orange peels and cherries and even some bittering agents into that. Really try to flavor up that syrup without distracting too much from the bourbon. Um, because this, this cocktail needs to still be very bourbon forward and very slightly sweet. We wanna keep it clean, so that for us, and then we'll fortify it with a little bit of Benedictine, since we love what that does. For me, my standard is gonna be uh, more than an eighth of an ounce, less than a quarter of an ounce. So we like to call that a heavy eighth. For bitters, and generally if I were making this at the bar, I might start with the bitters but I wanted to uh, address it last. Uh, we use three different types of bitters in ours. Um, and you can do whatever you want at home, uh, but I like to pick exactly what I want to bring out. Um, so bitters are going to be a combination of different tinctures. A tincture is going to be an extraction of one ingredient uh, into usually a strong alcohol. Uh, you could say like a tea is is uh, one way of extracting out like green tea into hot water. Well, there are some ingredients like barks or roots that might extract best in alcohol uh, at different strengths. So uh, a bitters would combine multiple different extractions of different ingredients at different like alcohol levels, then combine them into uh, one product. So we have store-bought bitters, we have uh, our own bitters that we make. Uh, for us, I always like to use a standard store-bought, something like an Angostura, we'll call it like an aromatic bitter and I like to do like two dashes of a base aromatic bitter. And then I like to stick to a dash each. And if I'm using droppers, because these can be, be very intense in their flavor, I like to use just six drops or about one dash of each. And for us, this is a mint sarsaparilla and a kombu bitter. All right, now let's talk about maybe the most important aspect to what's really gonna influence your old fashioned, water integration and your stir. 
So if you're using a fancy mixing glass like this at home, that's wonderful. If you don't, if you just have like a pint glass and you're trying to stir, that's fine too. Uh, the end result of this stirring process uh, is that you want to integrate in between a third fluid ounce of water and a half fluid ounce. So um, for stirring, just a quick note on technique. You want to keep two fingers in front of the spoon, two fingers behind it, and let your thumb sort of balance out the spoon as you're mixing it, letting the back of the spoon sort of hug the inside of the glass the whole time. Just like that. And so I know with our inch and a quarter cubic ice uh, that we use off of our cold draft machine, it's going to take us between 40 and 60 revolutions to achieve that third to half fluid ounce of water integration. For you at home, it might be less, especially if you have smaller ice, but if you have a smaller glass, got to keep that in mind too. Always, always taste to make sure it's where you want it to be, and that is. All right, so now we're gonna pour it over an ice cube, and for us, uh, we have uh, some of those fancy ice molds that gives clear ice. Uh, we do a little stamp, but at home, uh, I would just recommend using uh, ice that's got uh, as, as, as big as it can be, the largest surface volume. That way it doesn't water down as quickly and as easy while you're drinking it. Finally, uh, putting an aromatic touch on it. So for my old fashions, I like to do uh, what I call a naked garnish. Uh, I like to garnish it with the oil that's expressed from an orange peel and then discard the orange peel. Let the aromas just lay on top of there so I don't have to mess with an orange peel floating around in my drink. So I'll just take a simple vegetable peeler and I'll cut it on top of the drink. Then with the rind, the inside of it, the, p the pith facing me and the rind facing the drink, I'm going to simply express the oils on top of the drink. And there you have it. That's your old fashioned, the way we would recommend making it. Uh, tweak it at home if you like it sweeter, boozier, more water or less water. Uh, but this is, uh, this is the common good approved old fashioned. Cheers.